Awesome. So up next, we have um, Node.js on the mainframe. Um, I, I absolutely love this talk that, that Sean's about to give. Um, I'm just going to let him uh, jump right into it. I, I think you'll all have a, a fun ride here. Awesome. Thank you, Omri. Uh, so my talk today is really about JavaScript on and around the IBM mainframe. Might sound a little intimidating, but at the end of the day, it's not really about the mainframe. It's about the process of writing JavaScript and applying it to an unfamiliar environment. Um, so this is really the synthesis of two talks, uh, my tech talk on Node.js on the mainframe and also Key Punch, my Stackathon project, which extends additional JavaScript efforts to the client side that interact with the mainframe. So the original Node.js talk was two demos, and now we have the Electron thing, and that brings us to a trilogy. And, you know, when I think about trilogies and what my favorite trilogy is, one thing in particular comes to mind, and that's the original Star Wars trilogy. So I'm going to kind of st structure this and take it forward. We're going to have a little brief prequel and then move on to the, the three main demos here. So the first one, mainframes are like Death Stars. And I kind of say that with tongue in cheek because it's kind of a ridiculous statement, but I think there's a couple of, a couple of things there. So one central idea about mainframe, mainframes is the idea of centralization. And one idea about Death Stars is the centralization of galactic power. So who kind of builds these things? I mean, it could be large galactic empires. It could be large Fortune 1000 corporations. Those are the kinds of things that might have Death Star slash mainframes. Um, once you build this thing, it's really powerful compared to other alternatives. And uh, just a couple other things, long predicted to be obsolete, but thanks to IBM slash JJ Abrams, we keep getting rehashes of the existing stuff with new names uh, like Starkiller Base. Downtime can be catastrophic, resulting in painful changes of management. And once you're in the trenches, it can be difficult to navigate. Sometimes you gotta use the force. Okay, so now we're on to episode four, A New Hope for Productivity. And I'm gonna talk about Key Punch, the, the very first lightweight text editor built with the mainframe in mind. At the bottom, you can see my GitHub link if you are interested in checking it out. Okay, so here is um, my deployment architecture. Um, you can see the data moving through the internet from my client to the mainframe system. And this just signifies that there is a lot of latency between my JavaScript program and all the mainframe stuff because we're running Electron. No surprise it there. Okay, let's actually demo the thing. Let's punch it, Chewy. So here we are on the actual application. I put my user credentials in. Now I'm going to connect to the mainframe. I'd also like to show you that I've got light and dark themes. I always go with the dark theme, not the dark side, though. On the left side, I've got a variety of detailed SVG icons that I handcrafted artisanally. Um, and now I'd like to just open up a IBM mainframe job control language file. This just basically gives instructions for how a mainframe should do, do some sort of computing input with a batch job. All we're gonna do is take this text here, pass it in, and then have the mainframe print it back out to us. So it's kind of like you know an echo command or something like that. So full stack graduation so close, I can taste it. Congratulations to everyone, by the way. And let's go ahead and send this off for mainframe batch processing. Okay, that's quick and it's off. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the output then. I've got a job number that the mainframe automatically assigns, and I can just go ahead and click download to get the report. Pretty big, um, so I'll zoom out here. One thing I wanna point out is if you look at line uh, 14, you'll see 17 cards read, and that's because the file that we sent in actually was turned into virtual IBM punch cards, just like in the olden days. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we will actually see the output on line 61. Graduation so close, I can taste it. Okay, I've got one other feature, and that's basically a file browser for files on the mainframe. In mainframe land, they call it data sets. It's kind of structured a lot differently than most computers were used to. 
but I've got a file on there that just has some kind of meta information about this application. We don't have time to go through it, but if you come back to this video and pause it, you can check it out. The thing I do want to point out is at the very bottom, I've got special thanks to Fred Bader and Marcel Mitron, two excellent IBMers that helped me get a lot of this stuff kind of set up and get six systems access, which is you know, probably the hardest thing to do when you're developing stuff against mainframes. Okay, so now we're on to episode five, Enterprise Linux Strikes Back. Uh, for this particular project, um, I took Juke, which is a Spotify clone. Uh, that's one of the, the final projects that we do during the junior phase of Full Stack Academy. And I went ahead and I ported that to Linux on the mainframe. It took about a day and a half to do, um, and i just like to, to show that. Okay, so here's kind of the deployment architecture. You can see Node.js running on Linux on the physical mainframe, and it's running under a common hypervisor, and that provides pretty low latency access. So we kind of bounce back and forth, and um, it's we have pretty easy access to the existing mainframe assets, but we're on a common kind of Linux environment that we're used to. And so let's go ahead and show the example. There's Darth Vader wearing a Red Hat because we're hitting Red Hat Linux. There you go. Okay, so first what I'd like to do is run a, a script that I wrote which generates a report, and that's just gonna prove that we are on a mainframe here. Um, if you look, you can see architecture S390X and then byte order big Endian for the aspiring computer science out there. You might wanna check out what little Endian versus big Endian means. It's kind of an interesting side note, and then let's get this thing started. Okay. Looking good, let's switch over to the browser here in a second. And here we are, this is Juke. Uh, so it looks very similar to um, Spotify. We have different albums and things. And I just wanna prove that the audio actually works. Hopefully you'll all hear this. And we have different artists and type ahead, search, all that, all that good stuff. This is probably the my favorite project during the Okay, so now we're on to episode six, Return of the Mainframe Jedi. And, you know, this is kind of the most intense and serious part of working on a mainframe ZOS, an operating system that dates back to the 1960s. And so when you work with ZOS, you need to be ready to put on your hard hat. Okay, so let's get started. For this particular application, I've got a very simple uh, Node.js application I wrote, and I'll basically just be, be showing that. But first, I want to go a little bit into the uh, architecture of how this is hosted. Okay, so now uh, instead of running on Linux, we are running under a Unix subsystem under ZOS. And so um, latency is even less, and then we have a lot of access to compatibility systems, which you'll see in just a moment. So we bounce our data flow through ZOS. And that gives us access to something really cool called the ZOS Language Environment Library, which I'm hoping that IBM is gonna implement as a um, native extension. So by flowing through that, we hit C++ code that gives us very low level access to all of these legacy mainframe environments, um, which allows some like really cool opportunities for adding like real time internet enabling kind of stuff on top of existing corporate applications. So now I'm gonna go ahead and demo the um, final program here. You're gonna witness the, the firepower of this fully armed and operational computing platform. Get ready. Okay, so here we are in Unix. I'm gonna just go ahead and generate another report very similar to the Linux one. This has a little bit less information because I don't really know all the, the commands here. So we got ZOS 2.2 and we've got Node.js 0.12, which is like four years old. So this is a fully experimental Node.js version here, totally unsupported, not production ready. And finally, we'll just start it up. I've got some, some different word art and basically you select like a choose your own kind of choose your own adventure things. It's got some mainframe inside jokes. I hope a couple of my IBM coworkers that I invited are out here so someone can appreciate these mainframe inside jokes. Um, I select different subsystems and basically just describes what the different subsystems do. I think probably this is the last one. Yep, okay, game over. So closing thoughts, you know, we live in the golden age of development. We are really not limited by 
things like access to knowledge or access to tools because of things like open source and resources like full stack. Um, and so we are really only limited by our imaginations with like what we kind of focus our attention on. And JavaScript is really associated with startup culture, a lot of things like that. And it's a really cool application. But at the end of the day, I think JavaScript is really the ultimate duct tape programming language that used to be Perl, and I think that's JavaScript. And so we can apply that to things like startups, but we can also apply it to things in the long tail of enterprise IT if you want also. Um, so I challenge you all to think outside of the browser and come up with cool and interesting hacks with your new JavaScript skills. Thank you all. Um, if you are confused or anything, you can feel free to hit me in the comments on Facebook or any other way you want to reach out to me. I've got some additional information about mainframes and stuff there. Thank you all. Have a great day. That was, that was very impressive. I can't tell what's more hipster. Someone talking about using 80 billion buttons in a VR multi-room situation or someone running Node.js on a mainframe. Um, I, yeah, I feel like, I feel like if, if uh, Sean was talking to, to uh, Joey, he would say something like, Back in my day, we didn't have rooms, we didn't have keyboards, we didn't even have more than 80 lines on a terminal screen, and you're complaining about, you know, ray casting buttons. So, very cool. I'm very, very blown away by that. That the fact that that even works. Uh, yeah, I want to say I'm looking forward to uh, to your uh, upcoming prequel or sequel talk that I assume you know episode seven of Star Wars is out. So you need a you need a corresponding part of your talk for that.